have about 20 cows, we have pigs, we have sheep, we have dogs and cats, cows and, and we have poultry. various poultry. And uh, we raise 90% of what we eat and 90% of what our animals eat. And that's one of the big changes. It's, it's pretty easy to raise what you eat, but then you find yourself going to the feed store over and over and over again. And so our mission has been, how can we do this without going to the feed store over and over and over again? So what's in that feed matter to us? And we set out to figure out how did great-great-grandfather manage before Purina took over the prairies. So if you have an extra three quarts of milk sitting around every day from your nice dairy cow who actually can probably graze on three acres, you know, two or three acres of your grass is lots of grass for a dairy cow if she's properly managed in a, in a rotational grazing system, right? Three quarts of milk, protein supplement for a pig daily. One quart of milk, protein supplement for 12 large body layers. Milk is the keystone, the cornerstone of this. So we do not buy feed, okay? Or we buy very little feed. For our chickens, we do buy in uh, wheat that we ferment, but for all the other animals, if you're causing us cash going off the farm, you're off the farm. Okay, because, and this should make a lot of, whoever's the breadwinner, the husband or the wife, this is going to make you happy, because I am not bringing this money in for it to go into our pet We don't zoo. want an expensive hobby. That's right. Not even if it makes sure they go to That's right. Okay, thank you very much. And you get a nebulizer, and then you want to take about three tablespoons of each of these herbs dried, to a quart of water. Boil it because you're making what's called a decoction. About 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. Strain it and then you want to get the, usually they're about three milliliters, three cc saline packs. Mix equal amounts of both, about two to three milliliters of each one in a nebulizer and then use that nebulizer every four to six hours. It's amazing how well it works. If you don't have a nebulizer, get you a pot, put the herbs in it, throw in some saline solution. Yeah, we're 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 no, did it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, oh, and Faith and Caitlin, yeah. we wish that you were here. Yeah. <laughs> it's lovely to get to meet your mom. <laughs> awesome. so, I want to get to our car too. Maybe oh, lovely. Have a long So are you finding that you're having to do hive manipulation when you're transferring from the Langstroth over to the horizontal because some of the queens do not prefer to go vertical or having to change boxes around now going to the horizontal are you finding you're having an issue or what kind of manipulation are you doing to make them adapt? No issue and no manipulation. I choose not to manipulate bees. Uh, so Bees can adapt and overcome. They are amazing creatures. By the way, they're not native to North America. They're not native to here in Virginia. They're all native to Europe. They came over here, I believe they came over here probably with the Spanish, and then of course we've been bringing them over like crazy. Um, but bees will acclimate. If a tree, if, if, if bees are in a tree, and I just talked to somebody today, yep, right there, they've got a log that got logged off their property. It's sitting up on top of a pile and it's sideways. Those bees two months ago were this way. Now they're laying on a log pile this way and they've still, they're still there. They have not absconded, right? And that they have every reason to leave. But guess what? They're figuring it out. They're like, okay, we're on our side. We're getting ready to go into winter and we're gonna handle this. And so my whole idea is like, leave those bees alone. If you find bees in a tree, set a swarm trap up 
and start catching swarms off those bees every spring. But those bees are awesome bees, and just leave them alone if you can leave that tree alone. So I'm answering those questions back there. Yes, sir. So the question came up, are you having any issues with the queen moving too far out into your honey harvest, or are you keeping a buffer out there and you're not having brood show up? So great question. So in the vertical hives, what's very common um, is they'll put in a queen excluder, which is basically a screen that a queen can't come up through, uh, but the worker bees can and they put honey up here, but that keeps the queen down below so she's not laying eggs up here inside of the honeycombs. So you don't end up pulling a comb out and stick it in the freezer and the next thing you know you're like, oh, that's all baby bees and I just killed them all. That's not good. Um, so in the horizontal hive, basically, you know where your brood nest is, and outside of that is going to be honey frames, and I never use a queen excluder. You don't need a queen excluder, and as a beekeeper, I'm going to look at that. I look at every single frame um, out there before I throw it in the ice chest to take it to extract it, and I'm only taking capped honey. So if it's nectar, if it's bee bread, and obviously if it's open, I'm not taking it anyways. I take a very conservative amount of honey, um, and that's what you have to do. If you want to be sustainable and you want to not ever have your bees starve to death, because if they starve to death, that's on you, right? That's on me. And so I'm always very careful. Please always welcome Eustace Conn. <laughs> to be here with you guys, so many like-minded people that are interested in traditional ways and homesteading. A little background on myself is that I, have, I started counting up the other day, well how many years have I lived with the out electricity off the grid? So 42 continuous years completely off the grid. saw somebody over there has a shirt legalized freedom and uh, just I believe that uh, freedom is uh, essential you know we kind of got to using that word a couple of years ago what's essential well if anything is essential you know, for me freedom is it's a foundational baseline Eustace you're crazy it's like oh thank you and, uh, like nowadays they're like you know You've been telling me about this for a long time, haven't you? It's like, yep. <laughs> it's a good thing to, that in life, if you have lemons, make lemonade. You know, it, like, a lot of times the bad or the down is what it takes for you to recognize. You need to pick your head up and look around and see what's really going on. So just try to take anything that's bad and turn it into something good. Yeah, Turtle Island Preserve that's represented on that uh, TV show with the History Channel, the, the what do they call it, Mountain Men, yeah. yeah that, uh, that show, uh, they show the horses, because that's very romantic and that's good for photography. Uh, some, we generally have a small variety of the normal farm stuff, like chickens mostly for eggs, because I've got a lot of wild meat, so I, I raise them for the eggs. And, uh, and ducks, and usually, like I tried cows, and there's a, a big value for a cow, but on my mountains, and then that, that makes me think of something, and, and this has a lot to do with your question, you know, every place, like every one of you lives somewhere, and every one of you has a different habitat. Some of you came down from further north, some of you came up from the south, but every holler, every valley is a little bit different. So every place is suited to something a little bit different. And so it's good to figure out what animals to have, animal husbandry and or what plants, you know, or what even energy sources, like on the, the mountainside, if I wanted electricity, and then, I like love the, 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 the,
How did he not wait for his? But you know what I've done with that is I actually have a little tagline on this thing. So when I'm running my bobcat, I'll actually have a line on it so it doesn't swing. So if it's not you swinging. Yes. You, you bust your knees on. Oh yeah, I've had a that thing would have came through. It'd have been ugly. Small. Yeah. Now picture all on that side. Yeah. And it comes up. Oh, it was pretty big. I mean, oh, no. they're pretty good. Yeah. yeah it was, but it was short. That was my. That was saving grace. Saving grace. Another reason. I actually, on uh, one of the videos, I looked at you on a car, so I'm hauling hogs out of the woods. And this thing probably 25 feet long. I pick it up. Below the surface of the dirt. I mean, just below the surface of the dirt, they're yeah. most likely not composting worms, and they probably have their own kind of lifestyle Cut. that's not composting. Well, you can take it to an expert, ask a farmer in your area that might know. Um, you can also just reference that against other photos online. Um, just look up composting worms and see if it fits. Well, they'd have called me by now, so I threw out all the tickets. No, we, we just did the redrawing. Oh, so. oh, yeah. 
Yeah, because uh, the, the people that were... Uh, right, when we called them, they were like, oh, open until 3 p.m. Yeah, so they... Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for being at the conference.